Teslas. Everybody, everybody loves them or hates them. At the end of this video, you'll be able to see my experience with a Tesla and how much I was paying to charge the Tesla. So with a Tesla, such a cool, cool car. When they came out, they just look really cool and it, it is a love it or hate it type of scenario. Not everybody loves the Tesla. There has been a very big push for the electric vehicles or the EVs. And with that big push, Teslas have become more popular. When I saw gas prices going up and my commute getting longer, I thought that getting a Tesla was probably a pretty good idea. I was driving a gas guzzler and putting probably uh, $600 a month worth of gas into it. And that car is a Yukon. So I was driving Yukon, putting a lot of miles on it, and that's obviously not the best thing to do. When I saw and thought of buying a Tesla, personally, I'm a big fan of buying used cars. And I was able to find a good used Tesla. It's in good shape, has low mileage on it. Great car, gets me from A to B. And my first thought was, okay, now I'm not gonna have to ever pay for gas again. And true that Teslas do not drive on gas in any way, shape, or form inside the vehicle. What people many times don't think of, what I didn't think of, was that it is going to cost to charge it at my house. And so I did get a charging station at my house. You can get the, you can get the charging station at your house. And so I got that. And it, it's very cool. It's super convenient, so you, you can charge it at home. The difference, and you can also, with the Teslas or any other EVs, you can charge them uh, at public facilities as well. And the Tesla, you can charge at the Tesla super stations. And so the te Tesla super stations, they'll, they'll charge the car much faster. And the when you hook up the Tesla at home, it charges it much, much slower, right? And so... At home, you can expect to get about 40 miles an hour to charge. So it, it is pretty slow. At the supercharger, if you're almost on empty, then you can expect to probably last about an hour, an hour and a half. It depends on the supercharger. Some of them charge faster than others, and some of them are older than others, so not all of them are as efficient. To give you an idea, many Teslas, are, they'll, they'll have a range. And usually if there's a number with the Tesla, that's going to give you an idea as to how long that range is. For example, the S90 at its prime gets about 285 miles to the charge. The S100 is around 305 to 310 miles to the charge. The S75 is less than that. So I think the S75 is somewhere around 220, 230 miles to the charge. And then you're going to look at the other Tesla models as well. All of them are going to have their own ranges. And with that range, it's not actually too scary, especially if you can count on a commute. Because the Teslas are some of the cars that have kind of a longer range. They tend to have a longer range. Uh, many other cars don't really have that, that long of a range. Now, what I found to be interesting and almost alarming was that my electric bill, my electricity bill, has always been kind of high, and I would do things to try and keep the bill lower. Not run the AC all the time, not run the heater all the time in the winter, or the AC in the summer. And so try and keep it a little bit lower. This was always a constant battle. And so when I got the Tesla, I didn't really think about it, plug the Tesla in, and within a couple of months, I went back to, oh my goodness, what's going on with my electricity bill? This is nuts. There's no reason for this. And so my electricity bill was really high. I mean like really, really high. And so I called PG&E and said, okay, somebody's stealing my electric, something's going on. And so I would look at the different times, you know, look at spike times, they kind of walk me through the whole process, look at spike times, look at down times. And so every time I called them, they would kind of give me this song and dance. I'm like, PG&E, listen, you guys are either robbing me blind or there's something going on. And so after going everything and kind of figuring everything out, going through everything, looking at my, my PG&E bills, trying to figure out the power, 
after going through all of that, I thought, okay, well, maybe if I just take my car to the, to the supercharger, let me try that for a month and see what happens. Well, that was what it was. Ding, ding, ding. It was the car. And so for me to charge my, my, my car at home, my Tesla at home, I was paying an additional $450 a month extra, between $450 and $500 a month. I was paying my electricity bill as I was charging my Tesla. And so the biggest difference there is that I just wasn't paying attention. Once I started paying attention, I was like, wow, here's one of the saving graces. For me with my Tesla, I really lucked out. There was actually a couple times in history with Tesla that Tesla has actually allowed free charging at the super stations. It's not all the time, but when they did it, they were doing it to try and boost the sales of Tesla. Right now, that's not the case. And right now, if you do charge at a super station, there is a charge. I lucked out. I happened to buy a used Tesla that had that plan so that the next person that purchased this purchases the Tesla will actually be able to keep that plan. So when I sell my Tesla, that's actually not going to be the case. It will actually pass on to one owner, not the following owner. For, so it just goes one direction to the next person. That's it. Now, with that said, it is still less expensive from the research that I've done. It's less expensive to tar- charge the Tesla at the super stations than it is to charge them at home. Now, you're going to have to do your own research on it. But ultimately, what it comes down to is you're looking at about $4.50 for a 100-mile charge. At home, again, if I take that and, and push it across 30 days, the 450 to 500, I'm looking at about 15 bucks a day that I'm paying to charge my car. Doesn't sound like a killer. And if it's not on my PG&E bill along with the rest of my power, maybe it's not so bad. But at the end of the day, it was so painful just on one specific bill that since that happened, it's been three months now since I started charging my Tesla at the supercharger that there's only been two times now that I've actually brought it home to charge it and I was really desperate for miles on it. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope it's helpful. If you're thinking about getting a Tesla, if you're thinking about getting, or any, any electric vehicle, if you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle, just take a look and make sure that you have everything kind of figured out and know for a fact that even though it's an electric vehicle and it is itself, itself may not be putting off pollution, itself may be saving you on gas, there are going to be other bills that you have to pay with it. There are going to be other things that you have to pay for it. It's not automatically a a free gimme that the electric vehicle is going to do everything for you, especially if you drive a lot. You're still going to have a lot of wear and tear on it, and you're still going to have to be paying something for the for the electric. And so, hey, let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm always happy to help. And you know, normally for me it's real estate, but in this case, if you have any questions about about the Tesla, um, I can only tell you my experience. Of course, I'm not a Tesla expert by any stretch, um, but I can also tell you that Tesla customer service is super helpful. So, any questions at all? Feel free to give me a call. Phone number is four zero eight three nine three nine two nine four. Take care.